Here is yet again another part for the button maker. Uh, quite a bit easier than the last few. I'm going to start off with just a rectangle. And it says the height of this rectangle is 4. The length of it is 11 inches. Okay, and then we have holes that are drilled into it at various locations. Uh, before we give it some thickness though, let's add some fillets to it. Looks like the corners are rounded over at 0.5. And that's going all the way around. Extrude. This has a distance of 0.5. This is a fairly thick base, it's a half inch thick. We're going to make a new sketch on here. Point. And I want to hover right in the middle of this. It's going to line everything up in the middle. I'm not super particular about where these are placed. Uh, it's nice to get them horizontally aligned and roughly laid out the way I want them to be. but the real dimensioning comes when I start doing this. So the first one is 0.4375 away from the edge and this is using datum dimensioning which is where I use a common edge. So that was 1.5 on the last one. This one's right at 5.5 uh, which I already knew because I had it vertically aligned with the midpoint and horizontally aligned with the midpoint but I'll put that dimension in just to make sure it stays there and you know what this one isn't actually there so this dimension gets deleted this point gets deleted and there's just one more and they measure it from this side instead of continuing on from their datum which I don't care for, but that's the way they drew it, so that's the way we'll dimension. 0.4375. Just to confirm, from top to bottom, this should be 2 inches, and that's the same for all of them. Uh, notice it still says 3 dimensions needed. We can get rid of that by using a horizontal constraint and clicking on a few of these. So now it says fully constrained, which is good. Let's go ahead and finish the sketch. Uh, looks like the first one, if we go to hole, it says it's a quarter inch hole, but it is countersunk. And the countersink has a diameter of 0 0.5, 82 degrees and there are two of those so it's not just this feature if I click on centers again I can also select this point both of these have the same counter sink uh, when it has the side slanted in it's like something sinking into it this is a bore when it's flat on the sides okay again I lost where my my center points were so I can click and drag that up above the feature right click and make it visible and now I can still use these reference points for something else uh, and there are two of these they are both set to be through holes through all and have a diameter of 0.3125 Oop, and I forgot to click this so I'm going to go back double click on hole 2 select the uh, thing for centers, the button for centers, and make sure both of these are selected. Now I can turn off sketch 2. Okay, the only thing that I have left is on the other side of this. It shows that there is I'm sorry, I'm looking to see if there's a, uh, a chamfer or a fillet on the edge, which it shows in the picture, but it doesn't show a dimension. 
don't see it. Okay, so let's flip to the back side of this, make a new sketch, and uh, right here where these guys are, we're going to make four more points. This is the base of the button maker, by the way, and these four points are where the feet of it would be, and they have little rubber stoppers that make sure it doesn't slip off the table while you're making your ninja buttons and other things. So let's finish our sketch there. We're going to click on hole, and this time, because I didn't select a point ahead of time, it automatically selects them all for me. These do not go all the way through, so I'm going to change this to a distance. They have a depth of uh, 0.2875, and it's a threaded hole. 832 UNC means it's a number 8 hole with 32 threads per inch, and they're coarse threads, which means that they're further apart. Okay. So that's the front side and the back side, and this part is finished.